Welcome and welcome back to Lissa's Lizards. I'm Alyssa and these are all of my critters. <laughs> and yes, unlike my name, that does include snakes and I'm also into plants too, which is kind of what we're gonna be talking about today. So today I'm gonna give you guys some bioactive enclosure tours and we're gonna kind of talk about just the general basics of bioactive reptile enclosures and what that looks like. So I'm gonna show you guys three different kinds of bioactive enclosures. Basically, I'm gonna show you my best bioactive enclosures that I am super, super proud of. I'm also going to show you the enclosures that I am not so proud of, and I'm gonna explain why they aren't quite working the way the other ones do. And then I'm also gonna show you guys some of my half bioactive enclosures and kind of explain what that looks like and why I do that for some species. So bioactive is definitely a spectrum. There's definitely different ways to do it and it's not one size fits all. So we're kind of going to talk about a few of those different things and I'm going to show you those enclosures. So here we go. All right. So these are my two Europlatus species enclosures and I am super, super proud of these. This is Draco and Drusilla's, my two satanic leaf-tailed geckos, or they're also known as Europlatus fantasticus. I'm trying to see if I can find them. They're usually pretty well hidden. They are camouflage experts. But the reason I am so proud of these two enclosures is because they're truly the most successful bioactive enclosures I have ever had. So there is Ducky, my Europlatus fimbriatus, or giant leaf-tailed gecko. He is so cute. Look at his eyes. He's beautiful. But the reason that I'm so proud of these enclosures are basically because they have thrived the most. The plants grow super well. You can see I'm even like ex over expanding my root system here. But all of the plants of these enclosures have truly just thrived and gone crazy. And they're just really, really great bioactive enclosures. They've done really well. They have lived for a long time. They require the least amount of maintenance. And over here on the satanic leaf tail geckos enclosure, these plants have grown like crazy. I'm actually probably gonna have to replant this one right here because it's just overgrown so much. And the snake plant even with a species like Europlatus who require very high humidity, that snake plant has really just been thriving for a long time as well. So these enclosures have just done super well in terms of plants and humidity. And I'm just super proud of these. So these are what I would consider to be very, very good, very, very healthy bioactive enclosures with drainage layers and active springtails and isopods that are just doing super well. You can hear a little cricket in there. <laughs> um, but yeah, these ones do super well. And I do have these hooked up to my Mist King misting system up at the top. So they do get lots of water every day. They get about 30 seconds in the morning and 30 seconds in the evening. So these are the ones that I am the absolute most proud of right here. So these are two other enclosures, bioactive enclosures that I am pretty proud of. They're for my Lichianus gecko Yoda and my Chihuahua gecko Scooby. So this is an 18 by 18 by 24 Zilla enclosure. And this one does pretty well. The snake plant, despite the fact that this is like a pretty humid environment for a lychee, the snake plant's done pretty well. It's grown a lot, but I definitely think it's kind of on its last legs. I will probably have to replace that one soon. And this pothos, I will say, the reason I'm not the most proud of this bioactive enclosure is because that pothos plant continues to die, even though it gets sprayed with my Mist King Mister all the time, twice a day. And it is right up next to the full spectrum LED light. So I think the issue with this one is that when I built this background a while back, this was one of my first bioactive and this was one of my first backgrounds that I did by myself. So you live and you learn. And one of the things I've learned is that this this pot back here in this background isn't doing so great because I don't think it has that much drainage. So I definitely would redo that, but Yoda always kind of hides in there. I don't know if you can see her, maybe not, but yes. So I'm pretty proud of this one. This one's done fairly well. It's just that back pothos plant that continues to die on me, unfortunately. And then moving over here is Scooby. Hi, buddy. I'm gonna say hi to all your fans. He's a little cutie. 
So this one has actually done pretty well. This is a 29 gallon aquarium flipped vertically and converted using a frog cube 3D printed conversion kit. So this one does pretty well. This pothos back here definitely, definitely thrives, but I do have to water it independently of my Mist King Mist system. So that one does pretty well, but only because I'm diligent about watering that one. And this plant back here is not, not doing so hot. So I'm probably gonna repot that one and use a pothos plant. The goal with Bioactive, essentially, if you're doing everything right and if your setup is doing really well, you really shouldn't have any plants dying on you. So that plays a big factor in which of my Bioactives I think work really well and which ones are not thriving so much. So yeah, so those are two more that I am fairly proud of that I think are doing pretty okay. All right, the good, the bad, and the ugly, y'all. This is what I consider to be my worst bioactive enclosures. <laughs> so this is Monkey and Poke. They are my Crested Gecko and my Gargoyle Gecko. So the reason that I am not the biggest fan of these and why I personally plan on redoing these ones very soon is because all the plants tend to die in here. And I think my issue really is the size of this enclosure. I want to upgrade them to 29 gallons like Scooby's over here, but that is my plan for the next probably like few months or so. I would like to get these updated, but I do have to repot this pothos all the time. It dies on me constantly despite my mist king despite the full spectrum lights i'm really not 100 percent sure why this one just has not been doing well and i think it's because of the way that i built this background to have these in here i just don't really think it's a good way for plants to thrive so i definitely would consider redoing that next time and over here in pokes it's basically the same issue i i have issues with these pothos plants right in here and I'm constantly having to redo them. The snake plant also doesn't do very well. That's probably because of the humid environment in these, but there's poke as well. Hi girl. Hi sweetie. So yeah, so these definitely I would, I, I would and am planning on redoing because the plants really just don't thrive in these. I think I'm going to have a better shot of that in a bigger enclosure and I'm fully going to redo these. So they are bioactive enclosures. They're great, but I wouldn't say that they are the best bioactive enclosures. And like I've said, I'm going to redo these. So I do like the DIY backgrounds that I built on these, but I don't really think it's ideal for these species. I, I would like to have just a better, more like full coverage hiding spot for these animals. So that is something I'm going to be working on and upgrading. And as always, we're always trying to better our care, you know? So yeah, that's the ugly. Those are the ones I am not a fan of. All right, next I'm going to show you what I like to call half bioactive. And basically what that means, there's Tarzan, my yellow anaconda. Oh, hi buddy. He's so cute. You can't see his face, but he's precious. So what half bioactive to me is basically that it is bioactive soil. So there are um, giant canyon isopods in here and they help me a lot with the cleanup crew. So I do have springtails and isopods in the soil that are thriving and doing great. And I do put some like isopod food and things like that in there for them. But all of these plants are fake. I can't use, I don't want to use live plants in my heavy bodied snakes enclosures. And the reason for that is that they smush and kill all of them. So for me using live plants in some of my bigger animals like my yellow anaconda, my hog island boa constrictor, and my blue tongue skink. I do not use live plants in their enclosures. I give them bioactive soil. They are also connected to my mist king. It is all set up for them, but yeah, I, I just don't use live plants for them because they squish and kill them. So it's bioactive soil. It's definitely not fully bioactive. So I do wanna be clear about that. Bioactive does include live plants and this does not. So there is Tarzan's half bioactive enclosure. And moving on down here, I have Hazel, my Hog Island boa constrictor. She is, let's see if you can see her. She's right back there all curled up. She's a big baby these days. 
So this is again, half bioactive. There are springtails and isopods in this soil, but it's all fake plants. So that is something that I have found works for me. Like I was saying, I do believe that bioactive is a spectrum. I think that you can kind of half do it in a way that's naturalistic and beneficial to your animals. I guess a better word for this method is just naturalistic. Instead of it being fully bioactive, it's very natural. It's as close to, you know, truly bioactive as you can get, but without having to deal with your animals killing your plants all the time, you know? So that is something that just works really well for me. I might reconsider it and try live plants in the future, but for now, I am loving this. So yeah, those are my bioactive enclosure tours. I hope this helps potentially inspire people to go more naturalistic and really work on trying bioactive. I know it's a big, scary, daunting thing, but it doesn't have to be. And it's something that as long as you ensure that your husbandry, your temperatures, your lighting, all of those things are on point and good to go, then it's worth trying. And it's something that I'm really passionate about. I love bioactive. I love half bioactive. And I'm working on bettering my enclosures that I don't like and that I think could be improved. So those are just things that I like to do and I hope that I can inspire others to do the same. So let me know in the comments if you have any questions about bioactive, half bioactive, how to do it right, how not to do it right. I'm no expert, but I love to talk about it. So let's talk about it and I want to be as transparent as possible with you guys and just start those conversations. So thank you guys so much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. I appreciate you guys so much and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.